time is passing us never to return. And if we can catch that as it's happening, it's less likely that we'll wake up one day in anger or disappointment and go, where did all the time go? One of the interesting things about Memento Mori is like, when you hear it for the first time, you realize that you're actually not hearing it for the first time. I and mean, first off, most of us don't speak Latin, but there's something about Memento Mori where we kind of know how to say it. And then we start to recognize that it's been with us. Like, there's a store at Disneyland in New Orleans Square called Memento Mori. People were in it as a kid. There's, there's famous art that you remember seeing on movies or in museums that are in that what they call vanitas or the memento mori format even the symbols of memento mori the hourglass the flower the skull this doesn't feel unfamiliar to us because it isn't it's one of the oldest artistic and philosophical genres you could even call it a trope it's so common because humans for all time have been coming back to this thing, thinking about it, meditating on it, picking items to remind them of it, whether it's the skull on the philosopher's desk or a, a tattoo or a coin they carry in their pocket. It's just always been with us because death has always been with us. This wrestling with our mortality has always been with us. Memento mori just means remember you are mortal. Remember that you will die. Marcus Aurelius says you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. Never forget you're mortal. You don't have forever. You could go at any moment, whether it's a pandemic or a car crash or a cancer diagnosis. Life is very short. Don't take it for granted. Don't assume you're gonna live forever. Live as if you have limited time because you do have limited time. That's what Memento Mori means, and that's why I carry it with me everywhere I go. I think the Memento Mori concept that hit me the hardest comes from Seneca. Seneca says, don't think of death as something in the future that we're moving towards. Think of death as something that's happening now. He says, we're dying every minute, we're dying every day. He says, the time that passes belongs to death. It's dead to us. So his point is that you don't look at an actuary table and go, oh, I've got 40 years left. You go, oh, I've already died however many years I've been alive. That time is dead and gone and can never be gotten back. And when you realize then that as, as you are killing time, time is killing you, it changes your relationship with your life itself. And that's what memento mori is supposed to do. It's not supposed to be morbid or depressing or paralyzing. It's supposed to be the exact opposite. It's supposed to be clarifying. It's supposed to give you priority. It's supposed to give you perspective. It's supposed to help you realize how important the second in front of you right now is. And that if you ignore it, it dies and it's gone forever. Throughout history, memento mori reminders have come in many forms, right? It's a statue, it's a piece of art, it's a tombstone in a cemetery. Maybe most people don't want to think about this, but for the people that do, it's, it's striking and invigorating and moving because reflecting and meditating on the shortness of life is actually a key to living life to the fullest. My friends at 10,000 made this cool set of training gear inspired by these ideas. I already wear their clothes all the time. Uh, you, you've seen me running in their shorts a million times, but now they have this cool memento mori reminder on, on the short, which uh, when I look down, it always catches my eye. It's on their lightweight shirt and their interval short. It's another memento mori reminder, their interpretation of this timeless idea don't miss out, seize the day, and get yours now at 10,000.cc. Every time you see the sunset, every time you see the sunrise, you should stop as the Stoics do and remind yourself, you will never see that again. You'll never see that specific sunrise or specific sunset again, that's part of it. But the other thing is that's one less that you will ever get in your life. The Stoics say, it's not that death is in the future, but that we're dying every minute, every day. Every time we see the sunset, every time we get a haircut, every time we watch a few seconds tick on the clock, you have to remind yourself that it's time you will never get back. Time is not just our most precious resource, but it's tick, tick, ticking away. It is non-renewable. 
my Memento Mori practice, I, I, I bought on Etsy, I bought this chunk of a Victorian tombstone. It took forever to arrive, it came from Australia or something, and I, I don't want to think about or know how they got it, but it's a chunk of a tombstone from a very long time ago. It's just a piece and all it says on it is dad, right? This is the chunk of someone's tombstone who was a father, who died, it's gone forever. And I have that chunk on my bathroom mirror. When I get up in the morning to brush my teeth, when I brush my teeth before I go to bed, I grab something from the bathroom, I look at that. And it's a reminder to me of, of so many things. One, that we're all gonna die. No matter how important people are to us or we are to other people, no matter how much we love life, not only are we going to die, but in short order, even our tombs will be forgotten the marble that they put on our headstone will break apart and be forgotten and become trash that gets sold on the internet. But the other part of it is that the reason we can't forsake time, take it for granted, take time for granted, is the things that are important to us, that you're a father, you're a mother, that you're a son or daughter, whatever that is, that, that's what matters. I, I'm also just sobered by, inspired by, that that's the thing that someone chose to put on their tombstone. And so my Memento Mori practice, other than I, you know, I got the coin in my pocket, I've got one on my desk, uh, I've got a Memento Mori print on the wall in my office. All of that is great, but this one is the Memento Mori that hits me the hardest every single time I look at it. One part of my Memento Mori practice is whenever I'm cutting my kids' fingernails or cutting their hair or mowing the lawn or cutting my own fingernails, I try to think about the time that that is noting has elapsed. Time, as Seneca was saying, that will never get back. It's gone forever. Each time you're cutting your nails, that's one less time that you will ever do that. That's literally your, your body noting the time that has passed. And so Memento Mori isn't just having this stuff. It's also noticing the signs that life is giving you. Mary Laura Pilpot, the, this, this writer I like, she was noting how your face shows your age. And she says, maybe that's the purpose of faces, to sort of remind you of your mortality, to remind you how not in control you are, to remind yourself what is happening to you as it's happening. It's there, it stares you in the face, the Stoics would say. There's no escaping it, no matter how powerful or important or rich or successful or much fun or pleasure we're having. Time is passing us as we are doing this, never to return, never to come back. And if we can catch that as it's happening, it's less likely that we'll wake up one day in anger or disappointment and go, where did all the time go? I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe. But what I really want you to subscribe to is our daily Stoic email, one bit of Stoic wisdom, totally for free to the largest community of Stoics ever in existence. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. There's no spam. You can unsubscribe at any time. I love sending it. I've sent it every day for the last six years. And I hope to see you there at dailystoic.com slash email.